There's been a lot of breaking news, and I've got a few thoughts. So let's start with the mega news that uh, Jamal Adams was traded from the Jets to the Seahawks. Now this doesn't directly impact the Green Bay Packers, so I won't spend a ton of time on it. And it's also not draft related, so I'm kind of in a weird zone here where this doesn't pertain to me. Um, but I want to put my two cents in on it and say that the Seahawks are being dumb. It, it almost just feels like giving up. It's the only way I can... It seems weird to say how could you be giving up if you're getting Jamal Adams. Simple. Um, it's like a death roll. You are declining, 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 declining. And as a GM, you've proven over the years that you have no ability whatsoever to do anything in the draft. And when you can't draft, your team dies. That's what's been happening. The only reason you're still going is because Russell Wilson is such a great quarterback and you've got a good coach that can somehow make these pieces, which aren't very good anymore, still competitive and you still get to the playoffs now these days you're barely limping into the playoffs and then getting stomped out like you don't belong there not like the old days at all but the only thing you have left is to give away the rest of your picks for one guy for one guy then what so the the point is Jamal Adams gets you from, so let's say you're you're barely at that point where maybe we're going to get in, maybe we're not going to get in, and then you get Jamal Adams and that kind of bumps you in. So it's like, okay, it was a great move because now we're into the playoff. We're probably not going to get anywhere in the playoffs. We're certainly not going to win the Super Bowl, but we're better than we were and we can say that it was a good move. The biggest problem that I have is you've given away your picks. You're committing a ton of money. Let's start with the, the picks right away, though. Um, explain to me what you're going to do with, at linebacker. Well, we just drafted Jordan Brooks. Okay. Yeah, the, the guy who was a fifth-round pick up until the, uh, the the Seahawks took him in the first. Either way, you got Wagner and Wright. They're both in their 30s. So, okay, you replaced K.J. Wright, who's going to be a free agent. What about Wagner when he leaves? I don't know what you're going to do there. What about corner? You got Griffin, Dunbar didn't work out, and Flowers is garbage. You need a corner, at least one. How about Edge? Well, we got Collier, and he's garbage. Um, Irvin is garbage, and he's going to be a free agent. What about defensive tackle? Mayoa and Reed, garbage. What about your left guard? What about your center? What about your right tackle? What about your tight end? Any thoughts? Anything whatsoever? What are you going to do? You, what? Here's the thing. If this team is going to have any hope, you have to draft well. That's been the case for about three years now because you've been doing this for three years, four years, five years. I don't know how long since I've been doing these drafts. Like, come on, please. Just get a guard that can play football. Can you give me one guard so I can stop drafting offensive linemen for the Seahawks? And the, the really sad thing is I don't have to draft offensive linemen for the Seahawks anymore because you've created so many holes with your complete lack of ability to draft anybody that I can do whatever I want now. I still draft offensive linemen for the Seahawks because you desperately need it because they suck. But I could get you a tight end. I could even get you a wide receiver if I wanted to. I don't, I don't need to. You got Metcalf and Lockett. That seems fine, but you, I, you know you don't have a third one. Dorsett. Eh. Um, even safety. Quandre Diggs, am I supposed to get excited about it? He played for the Lions since forever. The Packers have never been scared of Quandre Diggs ever. So I don't care about Quandre Diggs. So I can give you a linebacker. I could give you a safety that's, you know, what, what is it? Well, Quandre's 27, so that'll be a long-term solution. So I can get you a linebacker. I can get you a corner. I can get you an edge rusher. I can get you a defensive tackle. I can get you a guard. I can get you a center. I can get you a tackle. I can get you a tight end because you need all that stuff. And that's why I say you guys are giving up. You need picks. You need to nail the draft. If you're going to turn this thing around, you've got to really start hitting on some picks and really start doing some stuff, and instead you give away all your picks, you get one guy. How is how is Jamal Adams going to help block for Russell Wilson or Chris Carson? How is he going to rush the passer? How is he going to help stop the run? How much can one guy do? I listen. He's a freak. He is as far as you know stopping the run, um, coverage, 
get into the, and that's why I say you're you're a much better team now. But long term, this is stupid. This this is doomed your team. I, I hope you recognize that. This is doomed your team. This this is a last gasp of a dying team and a GM that should have been fired a long time ago. That's all this is. On top of that, there's the there's the contract aspect of this, which this is not a great time with the salary cap plummeting down to about a, a what 175 million next year. Right now, before Jamal Adams gets added in, I'm looking at spot track. You have 19.18 million dollars. He's on his rookie deal, but here he, here's a couple problems. Number one, well, he says he doesn't need a new contract right this year, next year. He has all the control in the world. You have to pay him. This is not a one-year deal. You gave away two first-round picks and a third-round pick. A third-round pick is massive. And two first-round picks is... I know you got back a fourth. Oh, okay. Even if we cancel out the, the third, which it doesn't do that, you still give away two first-round picks. He has all the leverage in the world. He gets whatever he wants, which is also problematic because when the salary cap goes down... All these guys are going to be getting paid less. They're going to be really upset when they hit free agency and find out that all the average money is going down. Jamal might be the one guy whose salary cap goes up. Because if he says, I want $15 million, and the Seahawks go, look, man, I mean, I know the next progression is $15 million, but the, the cap is going down, so everybody's getting a little bit less these days. So I'm sorry. He's going to say, oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm not playing unless I get my $15 million. And guess what? Schneider's going to have to do it. Or he's going to be the biggest idiot in the world who gave away two firsts and a third for a guy that he has to now get rid of because he's refusing to show up. Um, and then you add, you, so $19 million and we drop $10 million bucks in the middle of that. How much do you have left? About $9 million bucks, right? $9 million is all you have left. On top of that, you're free agents. And and these aren't necessarily great players, but these are your starters. You got to pay KJ. You got KJ Wright. Uh, Greg Olson's gone. Bruce Irvin. I mean, you can let him walk, but again, that just means you have less people and in even bigger holes. KJ Wright isn't great, but it gets a lot worse after that. Well, I guess you, the guy you drafted, we'll see how it goes. Bruce Irvin. He's not great. Who fills his spot? Let's let me take a look here. Who do you have? Daryl Taylor, is is that the guy? L.J. Collier's on the other side. Who else? Who have you drafted? You haven't drafted anybody to fill that spot. Um, Jacob Hollister, Benson Mayo, Mike Yupati, Cedric Ogbuahi, um, you know Quentin Dunbar. I don't know what's going on with that. Luke Wilson. Geno Smith is a backup, I guess. I don't know. Posick. It just, I mean, again, these aren't good players, but these are your garbage starters. And when they go bye-bye, you have even worse starters. This is a bad decision by a GM who's just given up on the draft, which is the only way you can build a good team. You cannot build a good team through free agency. It doesn't work that way. Too expensive. It gets too expensive really fast. So... Terrible, terrible, terrible decision. Again, this year, it's going to help your team. He's going to be a freak. And I was, oh, I thought it was a bad decision. Da, 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 da. What's up now? Yes, I understand in 2020, it's going to help you. You're better in 2020 now than you were going to be. But in three years, this team is poof, gone. Schneider is terrible. He's ruined your team. Do not brag about this, Seahawks fans. Don't. It's okay to be a little bit excited because Jamal Adams is a freak. Best safety in football, probably. But this is just, this is not good. This is not smart. This is like a 14-year-old playing Madden. It's just, it's garbage. Sorry. From the Jets' perspective, it's pretty straightforward. It's a good move for them. They had to move on from Jamal, um, and they got massive compensation for it. Um... I mean, you can only do what you can do. Unfortunately, I, I'm fairly confident that it's not going to matter. Um, I just don't have any faith in the Jets and their ability to draft. I forgot who it was. Somebody was talking like, oh, the Jets have done such a great job drafting this new GM. Has done such a what are you talking about? Are you talking about the 2020? Are you already assuming Becton and Mims are going to be great players? Because if you just erase that and look at uh, 2019, what are we looking at here? Quinn and Williams 
who, first of all, is the number three overall pick. It's kind of hard to miss. Everybody takes Quinn and Williams. Plus, he had, didn't do all that great of a job. Your next pick was in the third round. You took Ja'Kai Polite, who lasted about five seconds on the team before being gone. Uh, Chuma Idoga. Cool, yeah. He's not going to play. Uh, Wesco, Cashman, and Blasson Austin. Are any of these guys ever going to play outside of your number three overall pick, which is basically picked for you? So, I mean, I, I don't want to trash the guy, but what are we basing this on? It has to be whoever said that, and I don't remember who it was. They don't know what they're talking about. Is assuming that Mackay Becton, Denzel Mims, Ashton Day, this is just a great draft, even though we haven't seen these guys yet, and we don't know. Um, so, I mean, I'm, I'm happy for the Jets and the Jets fans. That's cool. Um... I hope you can make it work because you need some help. A lot of it, you know, offensive line and stuff. Probably need a new running back because I don't think Le'Veon Bell really wants to be there. And you need a new coach, which he shouldn't have been hired in the first place. He should have been fired a long time ago. It just, it, I just don't have a lot of faith in the organization. I don't feel like I'm stepping on a lot of Jets fans' toes here. Because I feel like you guys already know. <laughs> so, uh, again, it, it's, again, you can only do what you can do. And you were handed something awesome and you accepted it. You're like, hey, you want a billion dollars for this guy that doesn't want to be on your team? Yeah. Okay. Now, are you going to waste the money? Yes. But celebrate, I guess. The draft is going to be fun for the next couple of years. You get two picks and maybe you trade up and get Superstar like Quinn and Williams, who isn't really showing up. Um, I, You know, best of luck, I guess. I don't know. I'm happy for you. As for news that more pertains to the Packers, the Chicago Bears traded away Adam Shaheen for a conditional sixth-round pick, um, which is decent enough compensation, but, again, I, I'm just not entirely sure what exactly the Bears are doing. As far as... Bears tight ends, not that any of them have actually really produced all that much, but guys that I'm at least a little bit concerned about. You had Trey Burton, who was a decent tight end that you picked up, and uh, Bears fans were very willing to let us all know that Trey Burton's about to tear it up. Um, he is now with the Colts, I believe, so he got hurt, and then the Bears are like, all right, I'm done with this. I, <laughs> I, don't, I don't really understand that, right? We got a good tight end. Ah, oh, he got hurt. Get him next year. Nah, let's, let's get rid of him. Okay. Then you got Adam Shaheen, also just constantly hurt, but he's, what is he, 25? He's 25 years old, pretty talented guy. I mean, of all the tight ends that you have, he's probably the only one left that I'm looking at going, geez, I hope he, it, it's kind of like Trubisky in a way where it's like nothing has really happened yet, but there's still that little bit of fear that like, what if he just, what if he shows up? And the Bears are like, well, let's just nip that in the bud right now. We don't want him to be showing up. I know you got Cole Komet, and that's kind of where we're going with this. We got Jimmy to be the veteran guy. He's going to coach up Cole Komet. We got the top guy in a really terrible tight end draft. So I guess it's just kind of all in, right? We're not going to pay for all these banged up injured guys that we tried and haven't really turned around. But um, that's it. I guess it's a, it's going to be a Jimmy Graham thing. And without all the training camp or anything else that – helps guys like tight ends get acclimated to the system and whatnot. Um, I guess I guess it's Jimmy Graham. Jimmy's your guy. So um, good luck with that. And uh, we'll see if Cole Komet can step up in a little bit. Maybe, maybe revive uh, Mitch Trubisky's career. <laughs> oh, man. And then finally, um, there was news a day or two ago uh zimmer was asked about dalvin cook and he's like yeah he's showing up and uh, the reporter's like well how do you know he's like well because dalvin told me something to that effect and it must have been one of those weird things where he was trying to just get the guy to be quiet and um just kind of off the top of his head that's the best he can come up with is just, just blatantly lie because dalvin cook his agent came out yesterday and he's like i don't know what he's talking about but dalvin has never said that I talked to Dalvin because I'm his agent, and we've talked about not showing up. He didn't really say that, but clearly he felt the need to come out and say, no, 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 we never said we're showing up. That's a lie. Um, so what does that mean? It, it, it means I'm, I'm not as excited as a lot of Packer fans, NFC North fans, whatever, about it because I think the Vikings run the ball well even without them. So they're still going to be an effective running team. 
But they're clearly not as scary without Dalvin. Dalvin has a set of skills that the other guys don't have. Um, so any kind of disconnect or or strife happening with the Vikings is a good thing. And it, it goes one of two ways. You're, you're going to miss out on Dalvin Cook, which is a benefit to the Packers, obviously, because now you don't have Dalvin Cook. Ha ha. Or you got to pay the man a lot of money, which is really unfortunate because he's not really worth a lot of money. I don't remember. It's off the top of my head, but I want to say he's played like 28, 29 games out of like 45 total. It's been terrible. Terrible. Um, his track record. So he is the opposite of durable. He is a super high-risk guy, and when you add the injuries on to everything else, you kind of start looking at you know the actuarial tables of how much return we're going to get out of this guy. There's going to be a gap, a massive gap between what Dalvin wants and what the Vikings want to pay him, and that seems irreconcilable to me. Now, the Vikings do tend to overpay to keep their guys, so it'll be interesting, and I hope that trend continues because as long as their salary cap is a mess, it means they're going to have a harder time um, you know, doing a good job. Um, so I, I, my gut feeling is they'll figure something out. Either Dalvin will just say, forget it. Let's just do this. Or, uh, the Vikings will find some kind of compensation that he's okay with. But, um, the, again, either way, they're going to overpay for Dalvin or they're not going to have Dalvin. And that's going to be a benefit to, um, to the Packers, obviously. So there you have it. Thanks a lot for watching. Please make sure you hit the subscribe button and the little bell notification to the right of that so you don't miss another episode. And also, please make sure you check out the Packernet podcast. You can find it on iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, Spotify, wherever it is you get your podcast. you can find the Packernet podcast. We'll catch you next time.